So you want to learn how to set up YouTube ads conversion tracking? Well, in this video, I'm going to be breaking down step by step exactly what you need to do to be able to make that happen. So you definitely want to stick with me throughout the rest of this video. Now, my name is Rakeem Madison, and if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Also, tick that bell icon if you want to learn how to build a long, sustainable business that will eventually give you the freedom you deserve. All right, so with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize my camera and we're gonna jump right into the content. All right, so now that my camera is minimized, you can see inside of the Google Ads Manager. Now kind of follow along with me step by step so we can get through this um, you know, as quickly as possible. All right, so first thing first, you can see this is the main page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually click on the tools and settings, the little tool up here at the top. Now you can see all of these different tabs. So we're gonna click on measurement and then we're gonna click on conversions. Now you're gonna see that I've already have some conversions set up um, that I've used and some of those have brought me conversions. Um, you know, I was actually able to do the tracking and see everything. Now let's get into how do you set these up? All right, so if I click on this plus right here, you're going to see we have a couple of different things that we can track. So you can see we have the website, we have we can track app conversions, we can track phone calls, and we can also import any Google Analytics data. But we're going to focus on the actual website, right, because that's the most common one that people come here for, unless, of course, you have an app or unless you're doing like paper call or any, or if you have like a local business or something, all right? All right, so here we go. So this is this is how we set it up step by step. So you can see here, the first thing you're gonna do is the category. What are you trying to track? So if I click this drop down arrow, I can track purchases, right? You can see it says when someone completes a purchase or checkout flow, um, we can do add to cart, we can do begin checkout, subscribe, um, contact, and then you see this one right here is submit lead form. Okay, this is the one that I use. And then when we go back to the other page, you'll see I've used that quite a bit um, because the way that I set my stuff up um, when I'm running ad, you know, campaigns, whether it's running them on Bing or I'm running them on Google Ads, I want to have you know my capture page, but then the page that they come to after the capture page, that's where I actually put this particular conversion pixel. The reason why is so that I want Google to tell me when I'm generating leads versus me going back into like whether I'm using ClickFunnels or Online Sales Pro or Royalty, whatever I'm using um, where I built my page, I don't want to have to go back to that every time, even though some of those uh, tools that I use, they actually have like instant notifications, but like for ClickFunnels, right? Unless you have like your your get response or your Aweber set up already to show you when you get leads versus you actually logging in. What you could do is literally, and, I, and I'll show you guys here in a minute after we show you how to set it up, but you'll be able to see, okay, I see this amount of conversions. This is the amount of leads that I have. So that's where the power comes in for that. All right, so let's get back to this. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use submit lead form. All right, so that's what we're gonna use. And then we're gonna name this. So what I like to do is whatever, um, whatever my campaign's name is, I put that in front of submit lead form, or I might just change it and say, um, it, what if my campaign was like bombshell, it'll be bombshell leads, right? Or bombshell submit lead form. That way I know that's what I'm tracking. That's what I'm allowing them to optimize for. All right. So I'll go ahead and do bombshell since I just kind of came up with that off the hook. All right. So bombshell submit lead form. And then now this right here, the value. Now, since I'm tracking for leads, right, the thing that I use, I go to don't use a value for this conversion action. Now, it says not recommended, but like I said, I've been doing this for quite some time, and I know what it is that I need to use to be able to make this work. Because if you do use the same value, this is somebody who's obviously running a ton of ads. They know their data. Um, they know... Like when they put the number in, the number you will put in here is so that once again, without you going to go check your stuff, you'll be able to look inside of your Google, your Google uh, statistics and you'll be able to see, okay, I've gotten this, com uh, this amount of conversions and whatever amount that you put here, that's the amount that you make for that conversion. Right. So if, if you don't really want to go even more, a little bit more techy into all that stuff and you just want to track for leads, I highly recommend you just go to don't use a value for this conversion action. 
All right, and then we're gonna go down. Now this section, um, there, there is the, this is the count. So you got the every and you have the one. So what I do when I'm doing submit lead forms is I use one, and this is why. It says recommended for leads, signups, or other conversions because only the first interaction is valuable. Now, if you go to this, now let's actually read this. You are tracking leads. Someone clicks your ad and enters their information twice on your website. Um, and then it says only one conversion is, is reported per click. Okay, hopefully you understand that. If you didn't, go ahead and rewind you know, back what I just said. And then for the every, this is how this works. If someone clicks on your ad and completes two separate purchases on different occasions, two, version, two conversions are recorded. Okay, so hopefully that part right there makes sense, but I'm going to go ahead and use one because that's what I use all the time. And then you can see here we have even more settings. Now this right here is the click through conversion window. So what that's basically saying is if a person, if, if, if somebody see, you know, in, expresses interest in your ad within a 30 day span, they'll be counted as a conversion. But if they go outside of that 30 day span and they convert, then it won't be converted as a conversion. OK, based upon the number that you actually see here. Right. So if it's it could be within 90 days, it will still be counted as a conversion versus if it's outside of that, it won't be. OK, so hopefully that part right there makes sense. Let me know in the comments um, if, if you're getting what I'm putting down. All right, so boom, so we got 30 days and then we're going to go down even further. So these are the v view through conversion windows. So the difference is up here, it was conversions can happen days after a person interacts with your ad. That was the difference there. Now, if we go down here, it says select the maximum time after a person views your ad that you want to count view through conversion. So to even go into more detail, it says a person may see your ad and not interact with it, then convert later. This is called a view through conversion. OK, so we're just going to leave those how they are. And then here, I'm not going to worry about this. I'm going to leave this on. Yes. And then down here, um, I usually leave this on uh, last click. I have tried uh, time decay and I was actually able to generate um, a sale um, using uh, using time decay, of course. You know, it could have been because of my ad or it could have been because of this, but I had it on time to de time decay um, at the time that I had generated a sale. OK, so I like to roll with last click, though, right, because that's 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 like the, the, the one that it's already set on. So I usually rock with that. And then after that, boom, I hit create and continue. All right. So now this is where it says install the tag yourself email the tag to if you have a developer or use Google Tag Manager. Now me personally, I just install it myself. It's not really a whole bunch of tech stuff. All you're going to do is click here, right? And then you're going to see this right here. You want to make sure it's on the global site tag isn't installed on all of your HTML pages. And then we want to click on this and as you see it, it automatically copies it. And then I'm just going to hit copy and then we're going to go ahead and use click funnels to actually do this. So I'm going to go to one of my funnels, give it a few seconds here. And then once I, once I pull my funnel up, I'll actually show you how you need to install it. Now this is using click funnels, right? But whatever you're using, like I said, if you're using online sales pro, um, builder raw, as long as you understand what the head code is, right? If you're putting it in the head code, and on the page, then you're going to be fine. So let's go to the one that I'm probably going to use. Let's go to Jumanji funnel. All right. So, all right. So now right, once we're on this page, if you're using click funnels, um, we want to go to settings. Okay. Because we want to do it for the entire funnel. So we already copied it. Now we're going to put it right here in the head tracking code. I'm going to paste it right there. Give me a sec. Boom. So I pasted it in there and then now I'm going to hit save down here. All right. So save and update settings. So now it's installed throughout the funnel. Now the next step is since we want to track the actual event as well. If I go back here, you're going to see that if I scroll down further, the event snippet. OK, so the page load is simply all that is, is as soon as they get to the page that you want to consider them as a lead, which would be the page that's after the capture page, 
then you would you would put a page load. So basically, anytime they come to that page, boom, they're counted as a lead or a conversion or whatever you're optimizing for. But then this one right here is, let's say for instance, you don't necessarily want to count conversions as when they come to the page, but you want to com count conversions as when they actually click a button on the page. Then that will be counted as a conversion if you actually use, if I click this like this and then it say click, boom, that's how that will work. But we're going to go ahead and use page load. So then we're going to come down here, boom, we're going to copy this and then we're going to go back over to click funnels go to the page after the uh, capture page give it a second here and then we're going to go into it right now this is a div this is where you want to pay attention the first time we did it for the entire funnel but now we're going to do it on a specific page for the event that we're trying to track so when i come in here i hit on uh settings and then i go to tracking code and then i oh well i got a paste facebook pixel installed on this one but I'm gonna go ahead. I can I can go ahead and take that off. I haven't ran this campaign in a while. But I would paste it in there just like that. Hit the X. Make sure I hit save so that it, it actually saves on the page. And then you see you have a submit form button on this page, but no email field. Okay, that that that's fine. And then we'll hit exit. And then to check to check and see if your stuff is actually on there, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna open up another page. And then I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to paste it over here. Now, the reason I'm doing this and I might have to refresh this page when I'm tracking it, depending on how the Google Tag Manager is set up, but it might already track it. So like if I go here, oh, I don't know why it did that. That's that's pretty crazy. I don't know why that did that. But either whether or less you can see here, if I actually hit record. Okay, so it doesn't allow me to do it. It might it might have actually messed up. So give, give me just a second. Let's actually use this page. That might be the page that I didn't use. I think I ended up using another page. Okay, so boom. So now now that we know that this page is going to work, I'm going to go ahead and hit edit page. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I just did because I, I guess that was one of the pages that um, I didn't end up using. I ended up linking them somewhere else. Okay, so now we're going to go to settings and then we're going to go to tracking code and then now boom, there's nothing there. Oh man, I, I screwed that part up. Let's go back to the uh, to grab the code. Sorry about that. Okay, so boom. So now we go here, boom, hit the X, hit save. Now that's good to go. So basically now if I take this page, open it, when I come over to that page, I will be able to see over here that the Google tag will show up. So let me grab this real quick boom we got it and then now we're going to paste this page over here hopefully this page is uh actually working it should be all right boom so this page is actually working and then you can see right here up at the top the google tag manager is showing that they're on there so boom we got the global site tag we have the google ads conversion tracking and then we have the google ads remarketing tag Okay, so what you want to do is you want to install this. This is called the Google Tag Assistant. Go to Google, type it in, get the extension here, and then you'll be able to see all this data to know that you set it up correctly. Okay, so hopefully you got some value from this video, and if you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Also, drop me a comment down below letting me know if this was helpful or valuable, and I know I kind of messed up on the, uh, the particular uh, website, but hopefully you guys forgive me. All right, so with that being said, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace.